so I just got my email notification that my baby chicks were being shipped I usually receive them within 48 hours so I'm gonna head out to the store and grab some supplies so I can get the Buddha set up for when I pick them up at the local post office okay come to the store with me I arrived to my local tractor supply let's see what they got I hope they have all my stuff there and I don't have to drive around looking for supplies yeah I know I should have gotten it earlier because I knew they were coming for a while but nevertheless I am on a hunt to grab my supplies how are you good Life here, honestly. Always been. Okay, I'm gonna need some chick grit if I can find it. It's usually over here. Oopsie, being a bad driver today. You know, when I come in and I look, I get so tempted. I just want to get extra chicks I know I don't need, but look at them. All cute. Yeah, but I'll stay away from that for now. All right, chick grit. What we got up here? I'm looking for chick grit. Chick grit? Yes. Chick or regular chick? No, chick. Maybe chick. Yeah. Oh, okay. that was All we close. have is a small bag. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. That's fine. That's good for now. Thank you. Yeah, it will. Yeah, I think it's actually too much, but so it, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Then I need my pine shavings. I'll grab two of these. Oops. Excuse me. These are the ones I usually get. So I'll just stick with that. I never get one. I always get two, so I'm gonna grab two of these. Now that I grabbed all I would actually need because I still have some starter grow feed, my waterers, my feeders, my heat supply for the baby chick, I will go pay for these and I'll head out to prepare the brooder. I just got that call from the post office that my baby chicks have arrived. So I'm gonna use one of these two thermometers here to put in the um, brooder and I'm gonna go install it. I'm gonna install the thermometer right here in the far corner away from the heat lamp. simply because it will be the coolest away from the heat lamp if I ever turn the heat lamp on. So we would know what the coolest part of the brooder is. Because it's over here. Okay, let me just make sure I'm putting this right. So see it's already 82 degrees in the poop, which is good. This is just kind of awkward the way I'm doing it, but because I'm not a lefty. <laughs> So the purpose of the thermometer is to make sure that I'm aware of the temperature that's maintained in the brooder to make sure they're getting adequate warmth. Because they can get sick real quick. Here you have your hand. Here you have your handy install.
83 degrees thus far. It's probably going to go up to triple digits today. So I'm not going to turn the brooder on. I'm just going to set up the water and the feed. Okay, I always prefer to put like a piece of wood to put the water and the feed on. That way it doesn't get too much dirt in there. I just elevate, elevate it a little bit off the floor. So here you have it. The brooder is set up. Water with a little sugar in it. Feed. Thermometer to check the temperature. So it's time to go. Let's go get our chicks. Can I get out please? Get back in your spot. You're gonna have new friends chirping. You're gonna have new friends, yeah. How about that? You're gonna have more company now. <clears throat> you got your feed, you got your water, your spot is nice and clean still. So, it's just two of you. Enjoy while it lasts. A little bit of a gloomy day, but that's okay. A gloomy day to pick up chicks? That's fine. Totally fine. Let's go get the chicks. I have arrived. I'm excited for my chicken. I can hear them already. They're ready to get rid of my chicken. Good morning. Good morning, Angel. I'm here for my chicken. Oh, I can hear nice. them. They're all happy. I, don't even give them away. I know. <laughs> I hope you had enough fun with them. <laughs> They're so used to me doing this. I can hear them chirping away. I can hear them loud and happy. Gotta give them away. Sure. All right. That is me. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Jeez. I do this so often and I still forget. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. So. Have a good one, okay? Thank you so much. It's like because I'm holding my camera. And here they are. He doesn't want to let them go. <laughs> They're so cute. So. We're going to go home, and the brooder is already set up, and we're going to put our chickens into our brooder, make sure the temperature is right, and see how they do. All right. I don't want to show my location. I keep doing that. Oh. Let's cheat and take a peek at them before we go home. You want to cheat? Let's cheat. Look at them. Hey. Hey, everybody. Hey. Welcome. Okay, now we're home. I am going to grab these. Babies. And we are going to head to the brooder to give them a new home. I'm holding them carefully, oh so carefully.
Okay, now that I have them right here in the burger, what I usually do is I open the box and I keep, take the lid off and I let them stay in the box for like a half hour and then I transfer them into the brooder with the pine shavings, the food and the water. Now, it's not gonna hurt them to keep them another half hour without water because it's a summertime and they have enough heat and they have still some of that um, material from the egg that they can still survive on. It's only been 48 hours since they were hatched. So it's 81 degrees in here. I'm not sure what it is in that box, but I'm gonna take the cover off and we'll just let them sit in there for a half hour. Once I'm going to raise them as Cornish game hens. Now that the chicks have been sitting in the brooder in their shipping box for a half hour, I'm going to take each one of the chicks out of the box. And while I do so, I will dip their beaks right here into the water so that they would know that that's where they feed, that's where they get their water. I won't give them any feed for now. I'll let them find the feed on their own and they will find it. So just take your thumb and hold the head gently. And I usually just put my thumb behind the head and I just dip the beak in the water like this. See? Just like so. Oh, she's drinking the water. There you go. So that's where you get your water, little guy. Look at this already. They're drinking. Look at this. On their own. You know exactly where to get the water. Look, they're already doing their thing. Come on over. I don't care so much about the feed right now. I just want them to get that sugar water so they can get a little energy from that. Water for me is the most important thing. This is how we do it. Already running around. And the time of the year, you know, is important because they do way better with the heat and the warmth. When they're cold, they lose so much energy in travel, even if it takes the same amount of time for them to get there. Remember naturally, when chicks are hatched in the wild, they stay with their mom under her wings so they get all the warmth and all the heat that they're required to survive from her body. So, they prefer the heat. They're already running around in here. I have here 20 of them. And they're all alive and well. Later on, I will put another little um, water for them to make sure that they all have adequate amount of water. I'm not worried about the food for now, like I said. So they can all, you know, feed from this one little feeder here. It's hot out and I wanna make sure that they have sufficient water, that they have enough space to have their water and that they're happy. 
It's no 83 degrees in here. I'm still not gonna put any heat, supplemental heat in here, simply because the temperature is gonna rise today, we're probably gonna go up into the triple digits. So I'm just not, you know, worried about that. They're fine, they're running around, they're not huddled in a corner trying to get warm, so they're all fine. And you know, we're living in this for 48 hours, so of course there's gonna be crap in here. But yeah, this is what's going on, and this is how they're doing, so. Welcome to Fifi's neighborhood. Look at them. Already feeding and drinking water, pecking around, running around. And this they haven't even been here for an hour yet, but this is what they're doing. They have sufficient space, as you can see. Look at that, look at all that room. So once they're, um, once they're, well, I'm gonna have them for three weeks, but if it seems like it's gonna get too cluttery in here, I'll just remove them from this brooder and I will put them down here. Now the space in here is getting so limited that I would have to go ahead and transfer these chickens down to the lower floor. It's now two weeks old. And look how big they are. Two weeks. I have the heat lamp on them today because it's actually, let's see, it's 74 degrees in here. There's a thunderstorm going on right now. I'm not sure if you can hear the ruckus in the background but there's lightning and thunder and rain but i'm just here to check on them to make sure that they're okay that they have heat i have the windows open for ventilation but i also have the heat lamp for them and they seem fine they're eating and drinking normally as they would but um this is just to show you that you know we're running out of room in here and so they need to be transferred to the lower level of the chicken coop. Excuse me. Excuse me, little lady. I'm gonna clean this all up and put some fresh pine shaving. Use a paint scraper. To just scrape all the crap from the base of the brooder. I'll just this thing is on my face. And I'll just I'll just gather all this and dump it on my compost heat. I clean this brooder out every single day because, you know, when the poop and the um, ammonia build up from the urine, it's because, you know, as they get older, they're going to be pooping more and they're going to be urinating more. And so the ammonia buildup is much more than when they were just, you know, two days old. So you want to make sure you keep it as clean as possible. I'm gonna clean and change your pine shavings out every day because you wanna keep them healthy. It's important that they always have clean, fresh air. This is a tight space and it's becoming tighter as they get older because they eat more. And these birds are designed to eat a lot of feed. They consume a lot of feed. Even though I'm only growing them as Cornish game hens, which is gonna be for three at three weeks, I'm gonna harvest them, you know, they look at it now compared to when i just had it i have to hold it actually with my two hands so it's okay i'm sorry i just want to show okay it's okay i gotta hold it now with my two hands and it's only two weeks old what's the matter 
you know, it's a good size, but um, yeah, the quarters are getting tight in here, so you want to make sure they have clean quarters. At all times. All right? All right, little girl? I mean, I ordered 20 of these and I still have 20. And it's best for them and for you if you can, you know, stay on top of things and keep them clean and healthy and well fed and um, hydrated because it would lessen the percentage of your loss. They can still die for whatever reason, but I still have 20 healthy chicks here. So I don't mind putting in the work. It's a win-win. So you have to make sure it's always nice and clean. They look comfortable in here. It is 84 degrees here and they have grown enough feathers to keep them warm during the day. I only put the heat lamp if needed during the nighttime when the temperature drops a bit. Make sure they have enough food. I just refill this thing every couple days. This chick grit right here, I add a little bit of that to their feed. To help with digestion. Enough. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <coughs> It should be in a mess because it seems quite dusty in here. And as they eat the feed, I put some in the floor pad right where they're feeding right now. And I did put some on, some on the top so that once they eat the feed, the grit will fall to the bottom. And they will always have grit. They'll eat it as they need it. Excuse me. Excuse me, girl. This one gallon water, I refill it twice a day for them because they did drink that much water and now I hang it so they can just reach up and drink as they so please. I don't even need this anymore. Sorry, ma'am. They're flopping the food because I just refilled it. There was already food in there, so I don't know why they're acting like. They didn't have any food, but it seems like they get so excited when I clean, whenever I clean and refill their water and their food. They just get up and start eating like it's a buffet. Look at her. She just wants to relax. But yeah, these are going to make 20 good size Cornish game hens to add to my freezer and this will last me a long time it'll last me over a year I'm not even certain that I would need to raise any meat birds next year I may have to raise some turkey I didn't raise any this year because I raised enough last year and the water is nice and clean their brooder is nice and clean their feet is full is now the big day and the Cornish game hands have now been transferred to the bigger coop. Here I placed two three gallon waterers for them and their feed station. I have two feeders there for them. So they have way more space than they did in that brooder. So there's a lot of space for 20 Cornish game hens. They have one week more to finish off and then they'll be harvested. And so this is the end result of my Cornish game hen. I harvested them and vacuum sealed it and I'm going to toss it in the freezer so we can make our meals. Look at this. Nice size. When it comes to raising my meat birds, 
I prefer a variety and that gives me an option to choose how I want to cook it and what dishes I want to make with the meat that I've raised. This year I was able to raise some broiler chicken, roasted chickens, and also this video shows you how I raise the Cornish game hens from start to finish. If you have any questions or tips, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time right here on Fifi's Journey.